Next up, we have uh, a fireside chat with one of the founders in Romania and one of the entrepreneurs that's considered quite to be quite the model. So I'm going to invite uh, Bogdan Yordake, co-founder of How to Web on Stage, who is going to have an awesome fireside chat with Radu Georgescu, who actually, I don't think, needs an introduction anymore, right? <laughs> Thank you, Andra. Hello, everybody. Hello, Radu. Hey there. What's up? Uh, Doing this fireside chat thing? Uh, I think that's great. I mean, uh, <laughs> seeing nothing in the room and everything, it's like, you know, chatting. You just have to chat with me. That's fine. Okay, I'm fair. just going to uh, leave my clock here uh, so we don't run over time. So, so um, about two hours, huh? Two hours and a half, actually. Um, we had a short conversation prior to our um, talk today on stage. Um, and, you know, th there are so many things like happening regarding Jakad in your work lately. Um, and now we've seen Jakad uh, Ventures being uh, presented or uh, no. launched. Um, and um, we've also seen like different types of investments, uh, a different type of investment, investment that the investments you've done until now with uh, the investment in typing DNA. Um, how, how did you get to this point? Like, what are the lessons you've learned along the way that kind of define uh, for you the actions that you want to take this year, next year, in the, in the next period? So, so to start with, it's been really great fun. I mean, um, great journey started back in 92. And in GCAD, we, we, we are now at the third stage. So we had uh, cycles of 10, 10 years. So the first cycle, it was one company, GCAD software, one company, multiple projects in the company. And that was the philosophy. I mean, I, I was like 24 years old. And you know, that's what I knew. Uh, let's do a company, make a company, and do products, kill them, another one, kill them, another one, sell it to Microsoft, this kind of you know, things. <laughs> Um, and, and then in 2013, 2003, uh, we said, okay, let's, let's get a group of company. And uh, each, each project has its own company, and then you can sell each project as a company and so on. So then so you created Jekad Group. Jekad Group. Uh, okay. And that was for another 10 years. And then the, the next stage is obviously become a, a, a VC, a, uh, a professional investors. And now, 10 years later, so we created uh, Jekad Ventures. And it's really good fun because you, you got to, to, to work not only with your own projects that you, know, you, you thought of and you developed themselves, but you, you, you end up working with a lot of you know, guys that you didn't know yet and, and you find them and you try to understand whether they're going to be successful or not. And it's not in your hands, it's not in your team's hands to make them successful, but you, you start looking at somebody that you don't know and uh, try to assess is he, gonna, is he or she gonna be successful or not. And it's, it's really good fun. It's a different kind of fun, uh, different kind of stress, but it's, it's really nice. So um, I don't know if, if um, everybody is aware of the investments, uh, the active investments in the Jakad Ventures now portfolio, right? Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about them? Like uh, everybody knows Vectorwatch, definitely. Um, okay. Now um, we, so, so we've mentioned is, typing DNA. You um, say you know them. What is Vectorwatch? Uh, Vectorwatch is a, a software company developing an operating system for... You are good. You are good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so Vectorwatch, it's an operating system. It's, it's not a watch. It's an operating system. The, the watch is actually just a demo of, of the operating system. Right. So we have, we have Vectorwatch, yep. and then we have um, uh, Typing DNA, and uh, what else? That's the latest. Uh, there is SymphoPay. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's going to redefine the way we're paying... Uh, not online like like other companies, but uh, the the way we pay, you know, physically with the, with the plastic at the shop. Um, uh, I, I don't even know. There are like six or seven. Uh, there is Gluru, um, mm -hmm. a great company that are reorganizing your files. Um, there uh, is so so. There, there uh, I was asking you this because uh, I'm sure that our audience doesn't know that. Um, you actually are, you are an investor in, in startups in Romania, right? Uh, but also an investor in startups in, in UK. So, so um, GK Adventures right now has two partners, Divakar Singh and myself. Um, Divakar is based in London, I'm based here. We're investing, so our thesis is investing in, in uh, Romania, startups in Romania and, and UK, uh, moving them to US and approaching you know, global market. 
what type of startups, what type of, um, of um, I don't know, verticals, uh, stage of development? A very early, early stage and very early stage. Uh, we, we get in very early, uh, try to, to, to be active in, in the company, not, not at the operational level, but uh, on the strategic level, be very active and, and giving guidance to the company. And I know that all the VCs are saying this, you know. Um, not necessarily all, but. Most of them are. Yeah, they, they uh, try to look busy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so early stage and very early stage, FinTech, probably is the closest thing that, that we're interested in, security. In any case, technology, software, uh, we, we don't really want to get into hardware. Um, Why is that? It's, it's very tough. So hardware is tough. Uh, it needs, needs a lot of money uh, and needs a different kind of knowledge. And one of the things that we've learned early days is that we need to invest in, in things that we do understand. And understanding uh, and uh, investing in hardware, which which means production, inventory. I mean, it, it, it's it's a different ball game. We don't know it very well. Okay, so um, uh, let's imagine that I'm a I'm a tech entrepreneur, as some of the folks um, like a, there in like, the back like or here, huh? yeah, or <laughs> on the other side um, are. Imagine I'm a tech entrepreneur. I'm I'm just starting this business really it's not even a business it's a product i don't know exactly what it is i don't know exactly how i'm gonna get it to market uh, i don't know exactly you know what's yeah. the type of client that i will approach um but i want to have a conversation with you i want to have a conversation with you and like teach yeah, my, you for, my, for my, five my, minutes my product uh, that's a uh, you, you want to have a conversation or you want to pitch because if you want to have a conversation, my email address is radu.georgescojiket.com. Okay. You know, and we'll have a conversation. Over the email or like face to face? Any, anyway, I, I'm, 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 I'm an approachable person. Uh, and, you know, in principle, unless you are, you are saying, I mean, I get, I, I'm getting about 200 legit and good emails per month, mm -hmm. about 400 emails in general, cold emails per month, out of 400, 200 are are, hey, I've got an idea, do you want to meet? The answer is no, you know? Or I, I want to open a pastry shop. Yeah, hmm. so, so, but 200 are legit and, you know, I, I'm meeting around 200 guys per, per month and that's okay and I'm happy to do this. So if you want to have a conversation, that's great. Uh, and that's my email address and let's, let's meet. Uh, if you want to pitch that, that's, uh, and you are who, who you said you are, it's a bit early. I mean, if, if you have an idea, you don't have anything, it's a bit too early even for us. Uh, and I would suggest you go to MVP Academy or, you know. Thank you, thank wherever. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in case you don't know, shameless plug, MVP Academy Accelerator is an acceleration program that uh, um, we, like the, the team from How to Web and Tech Hub uh, runs every year. Um, you, you know the famous Harrison Ford T-shirt. Uh, he said uh, the Harrison Ford it has a picture wearing a T-shirt on which is written, uh, "Yes, I'm Han Solo and Indiana Jones. Get over it." <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of reminds me of yeah. uh, myself trying to explain a, a good number of, of projects that the whole team is involved with. Um, okay, so you're saying maybe it's too early, but like. At the stage where you have some technology or you have you start to get traction, that's the moment I should approach you. So, so, so look, uh, the, the thing is that there is no uh, th there is no recipe on, on approaching VCs. The uh, the way to do it is to uh, a to try to understand who are the most probable VCs that could be interested and put it, put put yourself in there yourself as an entrepreneur. Put yourself into the in, into the VC uh, VC's shoes and try to understand. You know. What does a VC want and how do I explain best that I'm the fittest for what you want? What, what we are interested in is to see success and to understand why you are gonna be able to execute. I'm not really interested in a great idea. We, all of us have 20 ideas a day. I, I, I'm having 20 ideas a day uh, between my bed and my loo, you know, that's, that's always, you know? But the thing is, who's gonna execute these ideas? And how are you gonna convince me or whatever other in uh, investors that are in the, in the room here, how are you gonna uh, convince me that you are able to execute? 
Most of the 200 guys that I'm speaking with are tech guys that can develop a technology. Less of them can develop the product, even less of them can develop a business, and even less of them can execute the business. These are the guys that I'm looking for. So you tell me, how can you execute the business? And if you are two programmers, the, the assumption, and maybe it's wrong, but the assumption is that you are not going to be able. Um, have Sorry. you? No problem. Uh, I'm I'm a programmer as well, but I I don't take it to heart. So don't, don't, um, don't, don't do a business. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it has been told to me many times. Um, so um, have you ever been in the situation where you have, um, you know, a couple of very very talented technical people? They've put together some technology which is kind of amazing. So it's like a black magic thing, um, but you know that maybe they'll be able to create a product, but they won't be able to run the business. So does it ever happen to you know, have a conversation with an, with, a, with an entrepreneurial team as that and say, guys, listen, you can go from A to B and maybe from B to C, but from C onwards, we have to bring some like, professional CEOs or something like that to, to, keep, to uh, move, the th move things forward. Is that, is that something that, I mean, you've probably done that a couple of times with the previous companies. Is that something that you still plan to do with, with Jakarta Ventures or is it more um, uh, a pattern of a company uh, that you're not that interested right now? I, I, I don't believe in patterns. That, that's the first thing. True. Uh, second is that Ideally, the entrepreneur and the team can execute up to a, up, up for, for a long time. Uh, so I don't think that getting an, a new CEO or leader or whatever, it, it's something that should be done. I've seen a lot of mistakes being, being done like this. On the other hand, I think that there, is a, that, uh, that there are cycles in a company's life and it, for each cycle, a company needs a different leadership a different CEO, and whereas at the beginning the leadership should be emotional and you know, entrepreneurial and the guy that, that started should be the leader, but there comes a time when the company gets to be, uh, gets to be professional and, and a different kind of a leader needs to come. Okay, so that's something that's, I mean, totally fine in getting people who are not necessarily the biggest business leaders in... To in start with, yes. To start with. Okay. Um, going back to what you were saying, like you but said... But need to have the ability to execute, though. Obviously. Because yeah. uh, otherwise they just tell a good story and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't have any value. Um, so you're saying, you, you were uh, telling, uh, you're telling me about the strategic um, level that you can add to a company, right? Mm -hmm. And you were mentioning fintech, I would assume e-payment and Evangate are like very yeah. um, significant uh, anchor companies from which you've seen a lot of things uh, in the fintech Sinfopay. area. Uh, Sinfopay now. Coinzone. Yeah. Uh, then um, you mentioned um, the security. I, I've, been in, I've been involved in Bitcoin, you know. I know, I know, I know. Uh, but we'll leave, that, we, we'll leave that for another <laughs> time because otherwise you'll just like uh, take sure. us uh, too much time. So uh, the security... Um, vertical as well. Are there any others, um, sp like specific, that you you think uh, um, are like key assets in uh, working with uh, some of the companies? No, and, and, and think that that is technology related, cloud related, global ability to change the world without any borders. Um, that these are the you know the core things that we are looking for. Um, by the way, we have uh, two or three more minutes. If you want to ask any questions, uh, we'll take one maximum two questions from the audience. So raise your hand and probably somebody will bring a microphone. But in the meantime, I'll keep uh, asking uh, Radu uh, some, more, some more questions. So um, that being clear, now looking at um, you're saying you can, you can add strategic advantage. What does that mean? Like how, how can you... Um, like, how can you decipher that in very concrete actions? What does it mean adding strategic um, uh, leverage to a company, strategic direction? It, it, it means, you know, uh, creating the, the, the first levels of corporate governance, you know, to a minimum. Okay. Uh, it, it means, you know, networking, creating the board of advisors level. Uh, uh, it means the push of trying to get global, try to get things happen, 
Uh, it means the push of not focusing on nice technologies. I've seen so many companies uh, riding in a lot of uh, circles uh, where programmers are saying, oh, we've got this product, now we learned and we need to redo it because it's gonna be better. And next year, and next year, and five years later, they have the perfect product, you know. No market. With, with no market. Uh, so all these kind of pushes, you know, trying to, to match the company with the right customers, uh, with, with the right leadership when the time com comes, uh, with building the right management team. Uh, you know, all, all, this, all these things that uh, an entrepreneur is very focused on looking inside and creating the great company. Somebody needs to look outside, uh, and that, that's who we are. Um, you mentioned scaling to, to US. Uh, now you've got experience in doing that with uh, Avangate. Um, to a with, with, with quite a few companies, yeah. Yeah, but uh, like most, yeah. more specifically with, with Avangate, uh, that kind of grew significantly uh, after the move to, to US. What are the, I, I mean, like, what's the um, stage where you as a company should think about that? Um, and what are, like, the, I don't know, key things that you should check when, when um, starting this process? So, so I, uh, I think a, a, th there are multiple points where a company can do this. One of them, and th this is the one we like most, is when the company is um, in, in, in a... Um, Growth mode? No. When, when they... Ah... Uh, when, when they're confident and they don't really, they're not really fighting for any, anything, mm -hmm. um, they're not looking for any change, they're successful, uh, they're in their kind of confidence zone, they, they, they are, they're great in their local market, and then you need to, to, to throw in a stress point. Yeah. And, and create a challenge. Create, create a real challenge and, and make an inflation point into them. So, when, when they are in, in this point where nothing really forces them anywhere, you throw in, okay, you need to move into the US. Get a US CEO, get, uh, get money for this, and you need to have money. And that, that's a great challenge to have. Okay. Um, do I see any raised hands? Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is Sabina Onescu from CMILE. Hello. Hello. Uh, so my question for Radu. Uh, is, um, I mean, are you involved in recruiting people in your own companies? And if you are, what are you looking for uh, in the people that you're working with? Um, how do you identify um, if the person is going to be right for, for the company? And yeah, thank, thank you. That, that's a great question. And I think the answer is much, much uh, shorter than, than the, the question. I'm not. Um, <laughs> so sorry. Uh, so, so I believe that the companies need to have their own leadership and their own operational level and everything. And the companies that the, the companies need to be self-sustaining and do their job. I don't think it's the investor's job to to hire people sorry, and everything. Sorry, not not in the startups, but in your own. Uh, in in the VC. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're like five people. So I'm, I'm seeing one more people coming in two years from now. And when you were in Jekad, for example? Jekad, uh, I, I, was, I was never a CEO of a company. Uh, yeah, not, okay. not even the first one. I, I wasn't the CEO of the company. I'm not good as a CEO. I don't recognize, I, I, I cannot interview people. I do, I'm not able to organize things around me. Um, so there's always a CEO that does the stuff. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, our time is up, uh, but... Uh, two, two hours already? Yes, yes, with, it's been really, <laughs> really fast. Um, thanks for your time. No, thank um, you for having and, me. And um, let's hear some more good news from uh, Jekyll Ventures now. Cool, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.